Hey bosses, welcome to another episode of the podcast. This week I have another friend, talented guest, my friend Sean Cannell rhymes with YouTube channel. And what's awesome is Sean is actually going to be joining us to talk a little bit about YouTube secrets and strategies that I think you guys are going to find insanely valuable. So Sean, I'm so glad you're here. Kristen, I am fired up to be hanging out with you and your community. Thanks for having me. You are so welcome. I It's been fun. I've been having a bunch of uh, Wellspring members that are in the mastermind on the podcast. And by far, it has been like some of our highest rated episodes. I'm like, so my friends are cool. That's let's just what we're going to go down. So I'm like, all right, we've got even more good stuff coming down today. So if my audience doesn't know a lot about you, tell them a little just about your story and about you, and then we'll kind of get into the, the goodies. Yeah. So uh, I'm a new dad. I've uh, been married 17 years, but now I've got a two and a half year old and a seven month old, and I'm trying to run a business with uh, 20... 20 W-2 employees, 10 contractors, uh, multi-million dollar business. And so life is absolutely insane. I think over 4 million subscribers across YouTube channels, but I obviously didn't start there with the business or the children. Um, and if you take it all the way back to um, 2003, that's when I got into video before social media, before wow. Instagram, before YouTube even started. I was volunteering at my local church. The youth pastor handed me a video camera and some editing software and said, hey, start making some videos for the youth group. And of course, your first videos are your worst videos. I hope that everybody listening to this, mm -hmm. they're a little bit nervous about video, putting themselves out there. You're in good company. Like we all are nervous at the start and our first videos are gonna be terrible. I kind of had the privilege mm -hmm. of practicing in front of 16 kids, you know, uh, at this youth ministry in a very, you know, different environment than we have today. But what was funny was the first YouTube channel then we ever started was 2007 for that same church. And we, this was, I mean, we had no idea what I was doing. All, you couldn't upload custom thumbnails. There was 15 minute time limits. And this, you know, we were just dipping our toes into this whole video world and social media world. But the benefit of all of that was that I got into this stuff very early. So I've been doing video for 20 years now, YouTube for 16 years now. And I know that wow. sometimes people hear, oh man, YouTube's 16 years old, it's kind of saturated, but the, actually the opposite is true. YouTube is the most generous algorithm on the internet, and I really believe that this next decade is going to be the best decade on YouTube. And so it's a good time to still get in the game, learn the skills, and I think the opportunity for a podcast like this is I have made so many mistakes, Kristen. I think I probably have the reward for the most failures, most mistakes, most bad videos, and by just testing and experimenting that, mu that much, I figured out a few things that work and can help people. I love that. So tell me, because I'm, this is a very compelling argument that you just made. You're like, the next 10 years are going to be the most important for video. Tell me why you believe that. I'm like, I'm fascinated. Yeah. So <laughs> I think I specifically also, I, no question for video. I would, I don't think oh, yeah. you could debate video, yeah. but I actually think the next decade will be the best decade for YouTube for a list of reasons. Yeah. It is the dominant number one video platform by far. Nobody else can come close. Now, TikTok is kind of making waves, but the substance and the depth isn't there. Not only what may it get shut down, but there's even a, last year at VidCon, which is an event I'm speaking at this year, it's probably the largest online video event. Grace Africa was an influencer who had millions of TikTok followers, did a meetup, and actually nobody showed up. Now, I'm not trying to call her out or that's very sad. And eventually a few people came, but it was it went viral that nobody came. And what the, the unlock there was for years, people have been doing meetups with their YouTube audience. The TikTok audience, though, didn't have the same depth. The short form vertical video across platforms is kind of like empty calories. YouTube is like real protein that you need to survive for your brand, for your business. So so there's there's the depth piece. There's the the dominance that people uh, that YouTube is established in people's minds as as the the brand, the go to. Crossover to the fact they just landed the Sunday Sunday ticket. Football is going to be there. YouTube TV, owned by Google, parent company Alphabet. As far as infrastructure and ability to distribute video for for some people that want. You know, there's the free speech thing and, and Rumble is interesting and diversifying your platform is all interesting. But you sometimes think about who has the head start. When when you start a new company, it's about who's first. Once uh, industry is matured, it's about who's best. 
in both cases, YouTube is the one. They were first and they were still best in terms of the infrastructure, the back end, the staff, the amount of developers, the budget, all of this stuff compared to other platforms. And it's a search engine. So the cool thing about YouTube is it's a content library. Um, it's not a feed. So all these other platforms are social media feeds where your content comes and goes. People know that YouTube is a place where they're maybe watching, oh, I want to show you this funny video and it's five years old. Oh, or where you're going for um, deeper conversations, longer form content, even documentaries are being uploaded there. And then two other reasons. I think uh, the other thing that's fascinating about YouTube is this whole podcasting thing. They're now going all in on podcasting, which is already huge. But now as you upload videos that are like a video podcast, like we're doing right here, and you tag it and optimize it properly, it'll be distributed to YouTube Music, which is a competitor to Apple Podcasts, Spotify. So you have the podcast angle. You look at it is already the number one destination for podcasts consumed by more Americans in podcast uh, format. When you think about shows like Lewis Howe, School of Greatness, or Value Tame It, yeah. Patrick Bed David, or different shows like that, People go to YouTube actually more than the podcast platforms. Now, some people listening are offended. They're like, no, I only listen to audio podcasts, but it's actually a very small market compared to the bigger market. And then stats came out that more Americans are watching YouTube in their living rooms than what? other OTT platforms like Netflix, Hulu. Wow. And again, take it all full circle, the fact that my son and I are watching Gracie's Corner and Blippi these days on, on the smart TV. <laughs> Smoke it like you a know what I mean? <laughs> and so, and, and, and when I get off, uh, I'm work at home, I'm in my home office. When I start to go down and cook dinner, I turn on a video podcast or I turn on some of my favorite YouTube news sources and different things. So, so it's like, it's just such a dominant platform. And maybe the final thing kind of pivoting is as shocking as it sounds, it's still possible to start a brand new channel and grow because content is judged. It's based on on the content interest graph, not the social graph any longer. What does that mean? It means that if you put out good content, it can go viral and you don't need to go viral to grow your business for your listeners. Viral meaning you're at zero and all of a sudden you have 10,000 views. You're like, oh my gosh, I just started. Because it's not based on who follows you, it's based on the metrics of the, the topic you choose, whether someone clicks on it, whether they keep watching. And we see this all the time because as coaches of YouTube and I got the book, YouTube Secrets, all this different stuff, brand new people that are starting YouTube in 2023 are starting from scratch and growing. So when someone goes, oh, it's too late, it's too saturated, it's not true. Cream always rises to the top no matter how many cups of coffee you pour. So if you could figure out how to make good content, it can rise to the top. And that's why I said that YouTube is the most generous algorithm because it's not really being throttled like an Instagram or a Facebook where they're like, yeah, you've got these followers, but we're not going to show them your post. Kind of the reverse is true. Each video is just being judged on its own merits, one video at a time. So if you're talking about the right stuff, using the right strategies, there is unlimited opportunity for your listeners when it comes comes to YouTube. I hope everybody just took note of that because that was, you made a very, very compelling case. And I know for me, one of my, we all tend to like be locked into our own biases. So I'm on Instagram a lot. That's where I hang out. I actually, when I first really leveraged social media, I was using Facebook groups. And I think that's where I made like my first half a million. And then I was like, all right, time to like leverage Instagram. And you know, that's been fun. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm noticing more and more the limitations of Instagram. And I know my audience feels it too. They're like, I'm constantly competing against the algorithm. I feel like I have to go viral and like the viral going viral feels like the lottery instead of like each video being judged on merit. And I had all kind of resistance to starting a YouTube channel, to be totally honest with you. I was like, ah, uh, because I'm not, I'm not a consumer of YouTube very much. So therefore that's my own bias. And we tend to like see the world as we do. So I'm like, well, I'm not on YouTube very much. Who else is on YouTube? However, I am married to somebody who lives on YouTube. Anything in the house that needs to be fixed, my husband has YouTubed it. He has put together so many things. If something breaks, he's YouTubing it. He loves to watch the weirdest, longest, most boring YouTube videos on the planet. And so I just assume like, it, that's him doing his thing. So I, there I was with my bias, like, nah, YouTube's like not that great. And you had to, you know, to be honest, I think I had stories of like, yeah, but you had to like start YouTube 10 years ago to really have a thriving channel. I realized they're all stories. And so finally we hired um, a YouTube manager and she's like, Kristen, 
We are taking your podcast on YouTube. And I was resist resistance because I'm like, but I like having my messy bun and no makeup and recording my podcast in my, in my pajamas. And I'm like, no. And now I have to prepare. However, we are already seeing the benefits, the metrics. And I'll never forget, I think it was... um at our business summit that we did, I think you were talking about what's the average life of like a YouTuber. Like eventually with time, you're going to rise anyways because of how often people quit, right? Yeah. Well, that business is kind of a game of attrition in general. And the truth is about YouTube as yes. well, because especially for busy, busy business builders, people that are doing this as a side hustle, they want to grow their company, sell more products, build their team. Like there's just so many things competing for your attention. So when you commit to something like YouTube, you get a couple episodes done, but I promise you life's going to happen. And we all experience that. So there is something about having the discipline, the systems, the commitment. And the good news is that I've noticed like 99% of people who start eventually stop. So if you're kind of even discouraged wow. about starting slow, you will win if you just stick with it because eventually the competition will disappear. Um, it's a discipline thing. It's kind of a good grit is probably the best word. There's that famous book on grit and it's kind of just the stick to it -ness. And a, one funny story is, uh, Jennifer Allwood, right. From the wellspring was similarly, mm -hmm. she's kind of been uploading her podcast, but not doing it as you just locked in with actually getting on camera and, and thinking yep. about it that way, which has a side benefit. Once we have this conversation and this video asset, like there's so many other things you can do with it beyond YouTube as well. Just turning on the camera is like one of the most intelligent things you can do in your business because then you can cut out clips and put them everywhere else. But what was fascinating was I think she's she's doing the same as you. She wants to lean into YouTube and I believe her son um, has summer off and so she's gonna hire him and he's gonna help with the channel. So she asked, how can I, who could I point him to? Who are a couple female entrepreneurs that he could maybe follow? So I actually just thought that are on YouTube. And I said, um, I mentioned two. I said, Cody Sanchez and 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 Layla Hermosi. Yeah. And she goes, well, that's so funny. I love them. I've been following them forever. I didn't know they had YouTube channels. Okay. I don't think I did either. I don't think I did to either. To me, I'm still trying to process this. And I'm still trying to figure out because uh, I get to serve different communities and different audiences. But like the block you're describing, the bias you're describing what it reveals to me is a couple things. One, that if you're dominating a platform like Instagram, you you might just be crushing it at such a level that you don't even realize there's this much opportunity over here. Because mm -hmm. you, Jennifer, are like the reels I'm seeing from them or the content I'm seeing from them is like, it's great. Mm -hmm. So like, what? why would there even need to be? And, but that also the projection of the bias is incredibly harmful because Cody, Ch Cody Sanchez has 628,000 subscribers. Holy smoke. And Jennifer didn't know that that channel even existed. Same. Same. So, so what it reveals is that, you know, one of the things I like to say when someone says, oh, well, should I start a YouTube channel? I go, well, it's not for everybody. Like if you don't want more money, if you don't want more impact, if you don't <laughs> want to build a bigger legacy, if you don't want to diversify your income in case one of these other social media platforms gets shut down. So if you want to make your business vulnerable, um, if you're content, complacent, and ready to settle, quit, and give up, of course you shouldn't start a YouTube channel. <laughs> it's, not, it's a lot of work. So I have a, oh my gosh, my marketing guy would absolutely love this conversation because anytime I have hesitation for something, his just he can say one line to me that like takes the bias off of my, my eyes. He goes, Kristen, do you hate, do you money? hate money? And I go, oh, you had to ask me that question. Like, why? No, I like it. <laughs> don't want to make impact, but okay, here's the thing. Like that's so good and so compelling. Uh, and I, here's another shift I made too, because that was the first step for us. It was like, just turn the camera on, turn the camera on and upload the podcast, take my reels on Instagram, repurpose them over to YouTube and something, I think it was after our time at the summit, when you presented to us, I was like, holy moly, I am like, not there's a whole different world out there that I have not tapped into even remotely. And so I came home from, I was doing like some content production in the studio. I came home, told my AV guy, who's the AV, AV guy for Wellspring. So he was there watching. I was like, Drew, everything I've just told you, 
Forget that I just said it. We're not focusing on Instagram. I'm just going to do like my fun stuff on Instagram. I was like, from now on, this is our YouTube studio. And like, I had my YouTube manager. I was like, okay, send me the script of how I like, and I had her train my AV guy. Like, okay, all the things that it needs to be for YouTube metrics and all those things. This is our focus now. And you mentioned something that's so key. And I drill this into my audience all the time. It's like, you have to have the long game in mind. I'm thinking about my YouTube channel five years from now, not the one that's six months from now. Um, so like, what are some of the biggest, I don't know, obstacles that people have to just starting? Yeah. Um, the first is overthinking. I was yeah. in the airport yesterday, pain field flying from Everett, Washington to Las Vegas, Washington with my son. We're at Beecher's cheese, um, and sandwiches, which cheese and bread are not fully aligned with my future vision, especially as I approach 40 years old and I'm working on the ADB plan, which is the anti-dad bod plan. But ultimately, <laughs> as I am distracted and rabbit trailing, that's where I am regardless, because that was the only option. So there I am and I'm talking in the, and the uh, incredible um, woman that was uh, helping me get my tomato soup and my um, salami. I was trying to go for pure protein on that one, but as she was giving me all the things, I, I did get a kale Caesar salad, so I don't know why I feel like I need to defend myself, but ultimately, um, <laughs> as I'm there, she goes, are you on YouTube? She goes, are you? And I go, yeah, you know, uh, and she goes, thank you so much for your content. It's just, it's very helpful. And obviously I share a lot of tips on YouTube and she goes, I've been thinking about starting, but this one conversation, and I was journaling about it this morning, is what 100% of us feel. She goes, I've been thinking about starting for a long time. I've been overthinking it, and I've been mainly dealing with my inner stuff. We could probably park here, because this is like the main thing uh, yeah. that, that really holds us back, is, okay, is the name right? Am I ready to start yet? Uh, I've got Invisalign scheduled, but until I actually do it, I'll start. Um, you know, what is Sally from high school going to think you're 40 years old? Like Sally from high school is, is, does not even following you anymore. You know what I mean? Like you're <laughs> like, you're, uh, what is, wh what if, what are my parents going to think? Is it too late? Is this going to be a waste of my time? And you can just think over and over and there, and it's good to have questions to make a smart plan, but ultimately overthinking. And I found that even as I'm more established in business, but as we, I become more risk adverse. Maybe I'm more risk adverse as I age too. And I'm now thinking, I just had some people from the Wellspring, we're on this little retreat with some guys from our prayer pod. And he's like, I, I was talking about some vision I have to do, kind of the side project. And they were like, Sean, I was wearing a hat that says, think my brand is think media. They go, you're overthinking. <laughs> How did you start any of the stuff you did? You started messy. You started before you're yeah. ready. You started poop your pants scared. You started like, mm -hmm. you just had to start. And so I think that that's, that's a big one. I think that secondly is not getting educated. You know, a confused mind always says no. Mm -hmm. So yep. when you're not, you, you, if you haven't taken time to plan on paper, you could find, you know, we teach something called the five hour YouTube work week. You can find five hours to get this done in a week. And it, once you start to plan on your schedule and think about the resources you have and not make excuses that you need the best gear, your smartphone's good enough. So you're like, okay, I got a smartphone. Where am I going to shoot? I'm going to shoot in my office. Okay, I could order a little $12 microphone on Amazon if I want. Like all that information is there, but it's making the decision and making the commitment, getting educated. And sometimes we have partners of people in our life that also, same reason, a confused mind always says no. Sometimes if you feel like mm. the person around you is not supporting your vision for your business, for the, what you want to do, for what you want to create, it's because they actually really love you. And it's not because they're a hater. It's not because actually it could be, but it's not because like they're actually just being negative. It's because you haven't clearly articulated some of this information, which will help both of you. Because if they're like, is it even practical? What are the economics mm -hmm. of it? You know, how could that, when could this pan out? What are the, what is the business plan? If you're going to go to bank to get a small business loan, they would want to see a business plan for you. I think the same could be true in starting an endeavor like yeah. this. 
It doesn't have to be complex. Do it on a page or a page or a half a page or a napkin. Like here's my simple plan. I'm gonna start uploading a video podcast once a week. I'm gonna use Riverside to record it. I'm gonna and I'm just gonna start and I'm gonna see how it goes. And I'm gonna do it for six months. So I think those are some of the things. I think, you know, stop overthinking, invest in getting educated, doing a little bit of research. And as you go from confusion to clarity, you still have to step outside of your comfort zone and take a risk. But a lot of times we just are in repetitive thought patterns, but we're not actually getting answers because we haven't sat down to do the, a little bit of research. And I want to minimize everything I've just suggested because what people can do is they can go, okay, yeah, that's right. I need to research. So let me start my 10 year research plan. No, I'm talking about like Saturday morning, like one cup of coffee in 45 minutes. I'm not, I'm not talking about like, yes. you know, cause you can amplify any of those things. Uh, and, and I do think that sometimes too, I think in uh, yeah. the book, good to great, they call them uh, like cannonballs versus bullets. And it was for a business rather than like a full on cannonball SpaceX Elon Musk rocket launch, just one bullet. Like if you do little tests, you starting a YouTube channel, it's going to take you 20 minutes to set up the Google account. You probably already have one, the Gmail, you know, you uploading a video. Well, if you do a YouTube short, that could be done in another 20 minutes. So, so you're from the very moment of listening to this podcast, like 60 minutes away of getting a bullet into the marketplace, like talking about, yes. you know, your product or talking about whatever it is on a YouTube short, being okay with it being messy and being whatever, but like get the bullets out there. You don't have to commit to the full on. We're moving to Mars. Let's do one rocket launch. And knowing that rockets are going to probably explode on in the process as part of the research process. And you have, you know, failures along the way, but failures are the stepping stones to success. So kind of embracing all of that, those things up front, I think could be helpful to getting started on YouTube. Well, and this is why people want to research because they think research will prevent the failure instead of realizing that failure is inevitable. And let's, for me, I've just always been a messy implementer. So I'm just like, hey, the faster I implement, the faster I'm going to learn. And if it's messy, I don't care. This just always been my personality. It's worked out really well for me. Like my husband and I, we used to uh, build furniture before we had kids. And so for me, I just wanted the end product. So I started like, I'm like, it's square enough. And my husband's like, no, the science. And I'm so, I can be like that in my business. Like it's good enough. So, so the mentality, not good for building furniture, fantastic for getting into business. Cause I'm like, it's good enough. Get it out there. It's good enough. And if like, if people are watching this or listening to this on my podcast, like I've had three different iterations of my podcast, three different covers in three years. First one, because I put something out there and someone was like, your name's too close to mine. So I had to rename it. And like, you know what? I don't think anybody cares. Nobody remembers. Like, it's not a big deal. And also my first iterate, like, I think I'm on my third iteration of YouTube. And I'm like, it's okay. We're figuring it out. Because again, I'm just interested in getting started. And the highest resistance we have is often to just start. Put the, put the one thing out and give yourself a deadline. Like, in two hours, I will have my Google account set up, my YouTube channel set up, and I'm just going to film something randomly on, on my phone. So um, you've done a lot of trainings for a bunch of people. And specifically, I would just love to hear how you've trained people because my audience are network marketers or social sellers, a, a lar vast majority of them. Uh, so they're, you know, they're like, okay, I sell oils. Do I have an oil channel? Is that what I have to do? It's like, I think I can see them kind of getting in their head of like, do I need to have a YouTube channel about the product? I have my philosophy about this, but I'd love to hear your take. Yeah. So I think the opportunity is there's more options, but I think there's only two good ones. One is to brand the channel your first and last name. One thing that you're always going to take with you is your first and last name. Um, again, I would defer to you, but the problem, if you ever, you wouldn't want to name yourself related to a company because companies could change. Yep. You wouldn't want yep. so, but your first and last name is you, your journey, the, th the products you're using, the lessons you're le using. The secondly is to do a brand channel and that would be kind of, and there's three ways to name your channel, Sean Cannell or Sean's strategy and leadership YouTube channel or hmm. leadership and strategy for you. Like first and last name, name and a brand, like name and the thing you do, which might be a category like so, like Heather's health tips. 
I would love that because mm -hmm. now it's like everything health. And then maybe sometimes you talk about your product in your company, but you also could go yep. or you could create something like our channel is called Think Media. And it's it's not a personal brand. It's more of a media brand. And that's kind of sounds smart these days, maybe. But I just happened to name it that 10 years ago when I had like no clue what I was doing. So uh, I, any of those are good. But then I think the strategy is to think bigger than your company and to think bigger than your product. Yes. To think about the problem you solve, to think about the people you serve. The two questions to ask for a YouTube channel is, who do you serve and what problem do you solve? And bigger than, if it is oils, you, you honestly don't solve oils. That's, that's something yeah. you do because it may be, if someone's at a, a problem awareness, like I need to get my, I have breathe by doTERRA behind me, right? Like I, I need to get my breathe. Well, I'm pretty deep in the, the funnel to like be aware of that. Exactly. I, I, if yeah. I'm, I, I might be thinking like, man, I, I'm, I'm congested or I want more clarity in the morning. Yeah. And then you go at a bigger level, like I want to feel my best. I want to live my best life. And so ultimately, if you, it's not bad to brand your YouTube channel around maybe even that something like lifestyle and health. And then understand that I think a lot of network marketers, I'll use the word myopic. We just get so focused on just our product yes. and just our team. Whereas mm -hmm. I, I make one of my favorite ways of making money on YouTube is affiliate marketing, which is similar to network marketing, but here's how practically it could look. You've got your oils company and you maybe do a review of the brand new holiday box they just reviewed. You're like unboxing of, which is a really good video idea, by the way, because it's very easy to do. People are searching it. They want to see it. You could link directly to a product. And so you do that video, but then you also think about your three favorite books on the power of essential oils. And you talk about those in a video, and those are three Amazon links. You actually are now mm -hmm. going to create extra income streams. Now, once your channel grows, you also can get paid YouTube ad revenue. So bigger than just your products and then growing your team is now you've got affiliate income coming in. You could eventually have YouTube ad revenue coming in. And eventually, maybe a brand wants to sponsor your channel. Like, like you could step into mm -hmm. proper YouTube influencer, for lack of a better term, w the world, just by taking action. But as you stay focused on growing your company, you could generate more sales for products with videos, as I described, or you might title a video of, you know, my story of how I earn an extra $2,500 a month um, helping people have more energy. And then that yep. video fits there too, because you've built a brand that's big enough to encompass. And I'm not saying go general. It's, it's powerful to have a niche. It's powerful to be specific. Yep. So I think your niche should be related to if, if it's beach body, it's like, I help people get fit and it's fitness and it's workouts and it's anything related to that. I know some of these things could definitely overlap, uh, but it, if it's alternative health, maybe it's kind of that direction. Yep. Um, and so Ultimately, that's how I would be thinking about branding and positioning on YouTube for network marketers. That's perfect because uh, you bring up a really good point uh, because this happened with one of my students. She had uh, a YouTube channel, but it was all, and she's in oils, and her YouTube channel was all about like the use of oils and how to use some oil. And I finally told her, I was like, and she was like, well, well, I said, how many people already have somebody they're buying oil from when they're watching your YouTube videos and how many people in the field who are distributors are watching your channel. She's like, Oh, everybody. I was like, this is the problem. You're, you're talking to people who already have the oil. They've already purchased the oil. We actually, you were totally right. The word myopic, it was just so myopic that she had, I was like, I need you to zoom out. What are they, what are they using a search engine for before the oils? Like they're not looking for like, Hey, how do I use the, you know, lavender oil? They're looking for, how do I sleep better that like you have to get beyond that. So, and she ended up rebranding her entire YouTube channel. I was like, great. Now you have this YouTube channel. That's like a content library for your existing team members where they could just go to your library and they get that education from you. But you have to start seeing this as like a top of funnel, like where you're attracting people in, you're nurturing them and then you're selling. Um, and that's like, that is the formula for it, using any platform. But the fact that YouTube, you know, another person had told me before you presented at um, the summit was just like, Kristen, YouTube is the second largest search engine in the world just behind Google. I was like, eh, what? <laughs> I was just like, you, so, so what? <laughs> So again, I just had to remove my own biases, get out of my own myopic world of like Instagram or TikTok, just because that's where you, you know, just, you tend to get focused there. But now I'm like, all right, 
changing up the strategy. We're doing different things. And so, you know, leaning into the discomfort, leaning into also feeling like, oh my gosh, I'm going to look like a noob on YouTube. Like I have Instagram figured out, but now I'm going to be on YouTube and I have like a hundred followers. That doesn't, it, and you have to like eat some humble pie and realize, yeah, it doesn't like, oh, it doesn't look good that I only have a hundred subscribers on YouTube, but who cares? Like you just have to get to that too. Adding the humble pie to the earlier list is a, a big one for those that are established. And it is absolutely yeah. one of the big blockers I've noticed because not only yep. not only with the few subscribers when you first start, YouTube's growth can feel very sluggish. It is a marathon mm -hmm. and it's not a sprint. And I think that it also, it almost could be a little bit more honest at times too, because we just actually tracked this morning on our uh, social media meeting, YouTube short versus TikTok versus real and Instagram real. And we were just tracking average view duration and even the length of the same content. So it's the same vertical video co posted ac across mm -hmm. each platform. YouTube was the winner by about double of what TikTok was. And mm. Instagram was the loser. Now, this was just our data on our videos, but I think it speaks to the mindset of the platform as well. So what can happen mm. is sometimes people get into the feeling of, oh, wow, my reel got a couple thousand views. And you go, great, okay, well, if you can follow up. And, and, and by the way, I'm pro Instagram, It's especially in this yeah. context because of the ability to DMs and build relationships and comment back. Like, you should be all in mm -hmm. on Instagram for sure. But as far as we just think about that, the thing with YouTube is it is more of a destination learning platform yeah. that people are yeah. going there. They want more depth. They are gonna go deeper with you. It, it, it's a whole different level of, accelerating no like and trust but i think committing to being okay when you said i'm committed to the five-year vision i about fell out of my chair with glee and joy because <laughs> because that's you know the real vision and it compounds and what also can happen is just like other platforms you post 10 videos not a lot happens you post 25 but all of a sudden on video 33 a video breaks out and we call it vfm viral for me breaks out and gets yes. 23,000 views, kick, brings you 2,000 subscribers who now start watching your back library of videos. That happens less than other platforms yes. or almost not at all. And and then in year three, someone looks at you and like, oh, well, yeah, you're already established. Oh, this just, you just got lucky or you started, you're like, no, no, no I've been at this. And I, I was willing to have the grit necessary when it kind of had that slow start for the long-term vision and the payoff and the compound effect that is especially real on YouTube. Yeah, I definitely had to get over like, oh man, I've got this big brand and big business and now it looks like I've got this tiny YouTube and how does that look? And oh my gosh, one of my biggest mistake was like hiring a media company that was more about the metrics than was about the, more about, I'm gonna call it the vanity metrics than they were about the metrics that mattered. So, uh, and I hence fired them, but like, they were just like, well, let's just, you know, I'm gonna do this, you know, distribution thing and we're gonna get you like, and suddenly I got 10,000 subscribers <laughs> And they're not good subscribers. Like no engagement, no watches. And like, they didn't tell me this. So I'm like, you guys, I would have rather had a hundred diehard subscribers than a hundred thousand who didn't care. Like, or 10,000 who didn't care. And I'm doing something on my Instagram right now called the great unfollow, where I'm just like, listen, if you're not here, get out. I want the best followers. I want people that are engaged, that wanna be here. Um, but like, we can get caught up in vanity metrics in a way that doesn't serve us. And, um, our, our YouTube strategist, she came to us, I guess um, there was a very big name that she was going to work with, um, very big, like, uh, you know, maybe they were a monk in the mountains at some time in their life. And she was like, you know, I didn't want to work for that individual because it was just about pushing, pushing the numbers more than like the engagement and the actual, um, like the viewership and the nurturing the community. And that's for me, like, I'm like, I want a community. I want people that like enjoy the content. So I've, I've always, I just like that you're echoing the same thing I teach my students. It's like, you have to be in this for the long game. It's like small efforts compound over time until you hit the threshold where you're like, okay, we've hit, you know, um, what is it? Critical mass, so to speak, or the tipping point. We're like, now we, now we go. Um, but it's just a matter of like the grit, the hard, um, my trainer recently called it frustration tolerance. He's like, Kristen, you got to increase your frustration tolerance. I'm like, 
well, damn, if that isn't the best term I've ever heard, like the ability to like stay frustrated and stay in the game and not quit just because you're frustrated. I got to borrow that. That is a powerful. Isn't it amazing? Yeah, frustration yeah. tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. And I realized when he said that to me, cause it was in relation to fitness, it was like, he kicked me in the gut. I was like, how dare you, sir? I'm going to do a podcast episode just on this term. But I was like, how, how dare you say this? But I realized like I had high levels of frustration tolerance in my business and extremely low frustration levels of frustration tolerance uh, in my fitness. And I'm like, and the results showed. And so I was like, oh, well, I'm just going to take this term to the bank. Yeah. I, I need to follow <laughs> so you the same again on the countdown to my 40th birthday. I need to get the fitness yep. thing, ADB plan, anti-dad bod. <laughs> I'm on the uh, BMB. I'm on the best mom bod. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My husband's been on the same journey too, and it's been great. And so, yeah, it's just, again, the holistic picture of us as entrepreneurs being like, hey, you've been in this for however many years, what, 20 years you said? It's so That's long. Wild. 2003. <laughs> That's crazy. When did you graduate high school? I'm I graduated high school in 2002. I was 03. Okay. I was like, we must be close to the same graduating yep. class. And then, and then started video yeah. right then. So entrepreneur, you know, ship started a, a, for over really the last 10 years and our business is about seven years old. Oh my gosh. Were you like making videos for MySpace? <laughs> like, MySpace. Oh my. I had my MySpace was fire. Oh my God. And you got to put your favorite songs on there, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was all, that was what we <laughs> were doing right at that moment. Yeah. MySpace was, was, uh was so hot. It was the best. <laughs> and now here, well, now we have YouTube friends and anybody, here's the thing. Anybody can get started. I think, you know, I can just see someone in my audience being like, well, maybe when my business is further along, maybe when I have more success or maybe when, you know, I have the time, but this just comes from a simple decision of like, how long do I want to put my future on hold? And everyone that has built something extraordinary, it started with a very small yet very committed decision to like, I'm just going to start, even if it's messy. And and here's the thing, you're building a personal brand and growing an audience is the single best asset you can have as an entrepreneur. Because once you build, you know, a solid audience with your raving fans and a brand where people can know, like, and trust you, now you can, you can literally make money doing anything. You're like, I can create a course. I can have an affiliate program. It's just like, and I always tell people, I'm like, listen, if network marketing were to go away overnight, do what you're left with is your audience and your brand. And if you have a solid audience and you have a, and you have a brand, you're really never going to go hungry a day in your life as long as the internet is around. And I really believe that. Like, I've just thought multiple times, I'm like, well, if coaching business is done, that's okay. I've got an audience and I have a brand and I can pivot. Huge facts. And, and, and YouTube's one of the big opportunities to do that. And as we, you know, we're discussing, as you mentioned, once you have a brand bigger than your company, the ways to monetize that, there's 10, 20, 30 different ways that can follow you over the years um, and you're just being so smart to position yourself now thinking about the future, but also the, uh, you know, to your point, I also, oh my, once my business is bigger then I'd start the YouTube channel, I would actually say starting a YouTube channel could be one of the keys to getting your business bigger, yes. uh, especially because yes. many people, if you, many people are having the same mindset as you in this moment, you're thinking, okay, yeah, but YouTube's saturated. There's other people talking about it. And the truth is that mm -hmm. it actually isn't. But while most hesitate is because they're in that mindset. If I use a different industry and niche, um, you know, we are, we're looking at real estate, especially in the Seattle region, Snohomish County. Seattle is yeah. about 2 million people. Snohomish County, I want to say is about a million. And uh, it's very uh, packed area. A lot of people want to be there. I think those numbers were wrong. I think Seattle's like six and Sonomish County is like three or four. But regardless, um, we, as I'm shopping for real estate and thinking about doing Airbnbs, I actually go to YouTube a lot. And the listener might not do this at all, but I'll go to YouTube for market updates because I love to hear somebody just read to me, you know, what are the market updates? Certain areas, no doubt about it, have more competition than others. But what is so fascinating, Kristen, is I will go to Snohomish County Market Update, and there is one person. It's 2023. Like, what are we talking about? His name's Zach McDonald. I went to high school with him. There is one person who's not even being consistent. Like, Zach is props to him, but like, he uploads like here and there, and he's just focused on some other things. Now, there's a couple others to the fact that it takes grit. 
couple others that uploaded one eight months ago. And then another one that uploaded oh one three months ago. And then stop doing it. I will challenge the listener. That won't work. If you upload a video today yeah. and then one in six months and then one in 12 months and then start talking about at some dinner with somebody, oh, YouTube doesn't work, you are misrepresenting the opportunity. There's something about giving it the adequate effort, the adequate amount of outputs. But nevertheless, Zach is like dominating this industry. But how many agents are up there? Thousands? How many people? And so certainly there is a point of maybe saturation or, or you know, but we're not there. And I and I would say for 99% of people listening to this, there is not that many people. I just looked up May 2023 uh, Young Living, just since I've, I, companies I know. And ultimately, somebody was walking through May's promotions and they're going through and and there's no one else. Like, by the way, it's a, we're only 10 days into May. But there's the chance to reach people that are looking for a particular, they're thinking about getting a certain you know, the monthly box, the monthly thing or whatever. And mm -hmm. little by little, you could start building your follow in a strategy that I think is different than, again, 99% of others are using. And who cares if there's even it's five so or 10? Cool. I would say there's room for 50 people to be doing that in Snohomish County, but there's literally only one and that person's not being consistent. So if you can get out of your comfort zone, wow. and if you could punch fear in the face and press record, and if you can say, I'm going to be consistent, I will until, and I'm going to give this a good effort, I'm going to pace myself. There's so much opportunity waiting for you by just starting messy and pressing record and starting to upload videos to YouTube. Boom. I want to throw my pod podcast mic across the floor and be like, Sean has said it, <laughs> especially when you said misrepresenting the opportunity. Like if you're like, oh, doing it and like, oh, I'm just going to put in like a, a couple posts here and there. And I have called out network marketers. I was like, do not mis misrepresent the business opportunity because you're posting once a month and saying, oh, the business model doesn't work. Like everything works if you put the time, the effort, the energy long enough. And so that has just been my methodology the whole time. I was like, I don't care how long it takes. I'm going to keep going because all I need to do is really just outline my competition. That's all that needs to, I don't need to outwit them. I just need to outlast. That sounds like the survivor episode, like outwit, outlast, Australia, outback. <laughs> but it's true. Like you just need to outlast. outlast is the dream and it's, and it's hard. So I think that's where we muster yeah. our, yeah. our strength. We, we, you know, we pace ourselves. And I think that in, in today's culture, I think that's a great word. You know, our theme this year is called built to last. Every, every year we have a theme for our company and uh, built to last is actually based on the words of Jesus in Matthew 7, uh, 30, 24, 34, where he says, you know, you could build on the sand or you could build on the rock. And when the winds come and the rain comes, you want to be built on something solid. It's something about when I think about built to last, it was like, I don't want to burn out this year or I don't want to yes. run so hard that we last two years, but then everything breaks down. But I, and that, that's why we say it's a marathon and not a sprint. I've run half marathons. I've never run a full marathon, but I've run half marathons. And as a runner, I learned that what you don't do is you don't, I did track in high school. You don't like bust out of the gates like it's a, you know, a hundred meter dash because it's a marathon. So you're pacing yeah. yourself. You also have nutrition along the way. You want to stay hydrated. You're maybe taking a little jelly shot to get your electrolytes back up. And you're thinking about your form. You're thinking about your pace. Again, I want to encourage it's all on the same theme we're talking about that I think someone once said, people overestimate how much they can accomplish in one year, but they underestimate how much they can accomplish in three to five years. And mm -hmm. we're in such a world where we see people going viral around us and we're comparing ourselves to others and none of that's helpful. Comparison's the killer of creativity. It's the thief of joy. It is counterproductive. You just, you erase your pace. And if you pace yeah. yourself, the compound effect does kick in and exactly right. Some people can be kind of flashy for six months, flashy for eight, flashy for, you know, and it's the tortoise and the hare. I actually have it on my wall behind me. It says slow and steady. It's this cool gold leaf picture with at the end of slow and steady is a little turtle and the message is the tortoise and the hare. Like it doesn't seem very fancy to be I, a little turtle. I literally have a chapter in my book about the tortoise this and the hare. This is crazy. <laughs> I said, and my say, saying is speed exhaust, consistency compounds. And so it's just like, 
I play the game of consistency uh, compounding over time because I will outlast my competition every time because I play the game of sustainability. So I just love that your, your messaging and your methodology just mirrors so much of what I tell my audience. And I, I think this conversation is so timely because I think people are looking for, okay, how like the network marketing industry has changed quite drastically and rapidly in the last, not just in the last 10 years, but in the last three years, like there was the pre pandemic business model, what ha- what was happening in the pandemic and now post pandemic and people are having to pivot. And I think they're having to be a lot more creative. And so there is not nearly enough people in network marketing that are leveraging YouTube in a way that they can really powerfully to build an engaged audience, to build a following where you guys, I, I truly believe it becomes so easy to sell to people once you have brand trust. Once you have brand trust, people will literally throw their money at you because it's like, Kristen likes it, I'm buying it. Sean likes it, I'm buying it because of how helpful this channel has been. So something super excited. I haven't done this uh, before on my podcast, but I've actually partnered with Sean and I'm an affiliate for his course on how to like actually get your YouTube started. Because if you're like, listen, the most expensive thing you could do is DIY anything done like learning with the expert learning from the expert. Like if you got a leak in your house, you're not going to like spend hours fixing it. You're going to hire the expert. And I can't think of a better expert than Sean. So we have a link in the show notes. If you want to buy the course and get started, like let's just cut out all the guesswork, make it easy, take the action. And for me, like I've always been the person where I'm like, when I put money on the line, I show up differently. If I tell myself like, yeah, I'll get around to it. Yeah, I'll prioritize audience growth someday. But honestly, it was me paying a YouTube manager before I had a YouTube where I'm like, well, I'm paying her crap. I better start making some content that held me accountable to be me saying like, I think I want this. So um, just a little can you give a little once over of like what my audience like can expect? And cause I, I really do want them to hear about this. Yeah. And I, I, I'm so excited about this because, you know, over the years of, as I said, of making mistakes and tests and trial and error, I really distilled down, um, how to put out consistent videos that'll grow your brand in a seven step system. And so we call it the seven R's and that's what's taught inside of our course. And what's been powerful about it is I recently just had a conversation with one of our students. Her name is Mary. She actually just, her channel's called Mary's Nest. She just got a um, book deal from the, a traditional publisher that reached out to her because she has a YouTube channel. And they said, that's who we look for now. We look for people that have YouTube channels that have established platforms. She does like traditional home cooking videos. Um, She lives with her sweet husband in Texas. Uh, She started YouTube when she was 60. She just turned 65. And I love her story. She's amazing. (laughs) And she actually, she lives in a, uh, a small town in Texas. And she said that kids will even come up to her and say, oh, you're like a YouTube celebrity. And she's like, what do you mean? That's so weird. That sounds so funny. Well, she's actually about to hit a million subscribers. It's crazy. <gasps> oh my God. You can look her up. Her name's she's just and and she talked about it. She's also said, she goes, I I I loved cooking. I was very passionate about getting the nutrients that you can out of making your own bone broth and how to cook a chicken and all this different stuff. And she's like, I wanted to share that, but I was scared to get on camera. I didn't know how to make videos. I didn't know the steps. I was overthinking it. And I also wanted to just follow a system. I wanted to just go through, you know, I knew there was just random free information out there, but that would be a waste of my time, a waste of my energy. I wanted to just go where there was proven results. So she joined our program, Video Reiki Academy. Again, she had not even posted a video before, and that was uh, five years ago, which is also, I think, a good picture. What this is not is this isn't get rich quick. This is Mm -hmm. the education and the skill set of how to create simple YouTube videos that will grow your brand and help you make more money inside of your business. But the compound effect of years and, you know, when people use your link and they, they can read many different stories from people of all different backgrounds, people that are doing network marketing, people that started with network marketing and their brand grew bigger than that. And now they have more options and still do some there. Like, It's pretty uh, wild, the different stories from all different industries of fitness, kids, occupational therapists. We have pastors and ministers and churches like YouTube's massive and there is an audience for you. I talked to an expert recently. My friend Shalene Johnson was talking about how I talked about a thousand true fans. Yes, I love that concept. Yep. Who? Kevin Kelly wrote an article. 
Thank yeah, you. a thousand true a thousand fans people. will support anybody with a, a six figure business, like which would be yep. exactly true in this context. But as I was talking to Shalene about it, she goes, "I think it's more like five hundred or less." She's mm-hmm. like, "It's the 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 answer to to all of I think probably how the industry's shifting for you to what's happening and how noisy the world is and how much competition there are is the answer is community. It's yes. your loyal community." And the key is it doesn't have to be a big community. It's it's the people you've built trust with, the people that and that is so within reach. So it's fat it's wild that Mary's going to get a gold play button from YouTube for getting a, a million subscribers. Yes. Dr. Andrea Fer- Ferlin has a couple hundred subscribers again t- doing medical stuff. She's in Canada. She got a book deal too. They both got they're getting everybody's getting book deals that are actually cold reaching out to them, but all that to say is it's one thing to get a silver play button at a hundred thousand or a gold play button at a million, but we always say you don't need to. You you get a f- mm-hmm. couple thousand subscribers, five thousand, less than ten thousand subscribers. But if you know what you're doing and things are set up right and you're making the right videos that are building the right community, then it can change everything for your business. So yeah, I think people will absolutely love it. And of course, you know, it, we're just meeting your audience. But what I mentioned, we have we're so devoted to our customer success. We have 20 team members, probably a lot more, almost guarantee you more than most of my competitors or peers because we are um, committed to student success. We have a faculty. We have, we are here to serve people and we back the product. So of course people, I mean, people, it's, it's no risk. Like it's so just check it out. If it's not right for you, we have our total risk-free guarantee. Like I am convinced that uh, people that jump in will thank me later. And, you know, if they're open-minded to give this a try, that YouTube can really make a difference in their business. So good. I want to reiterate one time to somebody that's like, okay, I know this is what I need. I know that audience growth is an absolute priority and a necessity for, you know, growing. Not just my, I want you to be very future focused when you're viewing this, like the link through this lens. And I want you to notice that when you are looking at, acquiring the tools to grow an audience. What, what an audience is, is an asset. And we, when we buy an asset, assets appreciate with time. So this isn't about buying something and getting rich overnight. It's not like, okay, I'm going to buy this. And how quickly can I make my money back? That is the wrong question to ask yourself. The question to ask yourself is like, what is my five-year vision? And why is this initial investment going to appreciate with time and my consistency? And what is the future value of that audience? Is it the future value of like a potential book deal of, and like we've said, like you only need a thousand raving fans. And I agree with Shailene. I think it's maybe closer to 500, but just building that and what the doors it can open up for you. Cause that's how I got my book deal too. And so it's just like, what is possible because you're willing to invest in an asset? Just like if we were to buy real estate, it's like, I'm not, I'm not going to make money today on this, on this real piece of property. It's going to be five years from now, six years from now. It's all about the appreciation of the asset. So I will just want to challenge just our listeners and it might not have to be with this YouTube course. It could be with any part where you're growing your skill and your education to uh, acquire what you need to advance yourself in the marketplace. You have to view everything you're doing, every investment as an asset that appreciates with time and consistency and you putting in your compounded efforts with time. So I'll just wrap up with that. Cause I'm like, I don't want people thinking like, Oh, you know, I can't afford it right now. It's like, okay. Think of it as an asset that appreciates, right? Yeah, 100%. Assets and liabilities. When I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad around 2007 or 8, it kind of changed everything for me. And I like to think through that lens. And similarly, whether that is investing our money, the best investment we can make, which Warren Buffett actually affirmed was like, man, get more skills, you know, become more valuable, Mm -hmm. especially in a changing world. In fact, um, if it's not in there, we just did a recent challenge and we just created a brand new resource, which is AI for YouTube. And um, if it's not in there, I'll make sure that it's it's put into that yeah, offer on the other point. side of your link because it, yeah. we are also the cool thing about it. I know a lot of people are talking about that right now, but it's getting even easier. You can now have the yeah. proper prompt prompts uh, prompts. Um, there's some video editing AI tools that speed things up. It's pretty wild. And so um, as far as from I know people roll with you to learn all things, network marketing and leadership and all that kind of stuff. You're investing also in an asset because there is lifetime um, 
guarantee or lifetime access to the program with including updates. And we are obsessed. We're like scientists that are like, what is the best stuff for YouTube? What is happening you know, right now? What are the best tools to save time? And that's a brand new thing that just came out that we've been working on as a team because we've been leaning into AI to really make it practical. Because whether you want to hang out with your kids, whether you're working on something else, I know we want to do all the above, whether you want more leverage, this isn't about you know, just completely sacrificing the things that matter most. It's about being really smart with your time, having the right systems, and having YouTube support you, and having YouTube serve you, not you serve YouTube. And I'm very excited about that. It just came to mind because we just um, launched it. I love it. I you know, I'm very, very picky about any affiliate partnerships I do because they have to align with my core values and how I treat my students. Cause essentially it's like, I'm lending my students to you. And like, we have the same philosophy with my company. Like I also have 20 people on my team because we care about the student fulfillment and the student success that much where a lot of my competitors, they operate very lean. And so they don't have large teams. And so the fulfillment usually suffers in the name of higher profits for the owner. But for me, I'm like, I'd rather cut profits to ensure delivery and fulfillment for my team. And I just love that that's, that's you too. It tells me you have a heart of, of service and you genuinely care. The fact that it's a lifetime program, it's, you have, you know, a guarantee you update it. It just tells me you care, you truly care. And so I love partnering with people that care. And I think my audience just got so much value from this episode. I hope to see so many more YouTube channels like birthed into the world. Um, Sean, thank you so much for being here. This was absolutely amazing. Kristen, I'm so thankful for you. Grateful for your community. And uh, thanks for having me.